Deep Oaken's combat changes as the game evolves, and something I've started enjoying is the weapon movement. I'm not talking about running around with a weapon, but weapons that physically move you. A bunch of different crits allow some movement tech that I'll be exploring today. But before we start, make sure to check out my last video on the mysterious floating keep. That's all about the Lightborn lore that we know, since they're here for a limited time. And today we have a special quiz, a test of your in-game knowledge of weapon lore. Imagine this, you've been summoned by Lord Regent and now you're in big trouble. A spy has been found within the royal castle walls and now it's your turn to be in Interrogated. Three weapons are shown to you and Lord Regent demands you pick the weapon designed by Capra Blacksmiths. So, which weapon is made by Capra's? Weapon number one, the Wailing Dagger, commonly used by the dangerous mercenary group the Knives of Elise. Weapon number two, the Serpent's Edge, known for its interesting and unique curved appearance. And weapon number three, the Crescent Cleaver, a serrated blade perfect for slaying any monster. Again, you're picking the weapon of Capra Origin. Make sure to guess correctly or you'll fall under his control and he'll make you hit that subscribe button. So, no mistakes can be made. Now let's see. Alright, if you pick the Serpent's Edge, you pass this test, but soon enough you'll be subscribed to The Real Punchy. Despite popular belief, the Serpent's Edge was created by Capra Blacksmiths and picked up by the Etrium Warriors. You'd think the word Serpent represents our snake friends, but it's a fact this weapon is not Etrian. Anyway, it's Punchy, and today we'll be breaking down movement options provided by weapon crits. And there's more than you think. Starting off in the medium category, let's talk about the Serpent's Edge. This squiggly weapon has some great stats, but I only care about its unique movement. Its crit contains three slashes that move you in the direction you face, and it can be used to apply pressure. Although this move is extremely telegraphed, it's difficult to parry in high ping, and that's why its block damage is so nice. Instead of the basic medium crit, you're able to get in people's faces, move around their guard, and sometimes catch them mid-animation. It's a unique movement option that's exclusive to the Serpent's Edge. If you play medium and you don't want much movement, maybe Katana is the way to go. Both Katana and Shatter Katana share the same movement with their unique crit. It applies a good amount of posture as you slash forward. You can also do some pretty crazy mix-ups if you hop and do this in the air. Same as the Serpent's Edge, it's very telegraphed, but it does close the gap in an instant. It's straightforward, and it's a solid pick. Let's move on to the daggers. Many daggers gain the advantage of a multi-hit critical that slashes forward in order to apply pressure. The basic dagger crits are the best tool for catching people off guard and cracking down on blocking opponents. And if you want to extend your movement with the normal dagger critical, it works best to slide jump into it. I think it's pretty nice, but you do have little control over your movement once you start doing the crit, but it's an option nevertheless. An extension of this idea was introduced with the Wailing Knife. Instead of a multi-hitting option, it instead launches you at the opponent with a singular hit. I found it extremely fun to use in order to catch people lacking and close gaps. Again, once you do that critical, you're locked in that direction, but it's pretty nice to get to them quickly. Just Karita's unique flying kick does a similar animation, but I find myself using it as a combo. The distance you shoot at is actually quite short, but its lack of knockback is great for combo extension. Same as the other crits that move you forward, throwing this out in the air works effectively most of the time. But I will say, the distance you go is not that great, it's not going to be like a wailing knife or halberd animation, you know, it's more for combos. Believe it or not, some heavy weapons get a bonus option that helps them mix up. The halberd's critical is comparable to the wailing dagger because it essentially does the same thing. Basically, you shoot yourself in a direction with a hitbox and that applies pressure and closes the gap between you. Aerial crits with the halberd can result in some solid combos if they aren't expecting it and it's fairly hard to punish. Just like the serpent's edge, this crit is immune to gravity because if you do it in the air, you'll float for a second. Now, another heavy weapon that has the one and only command grab in the game is the crescent cleaver. With this, you lunge forward and impale anything unlucky enough to still be there. In contrast to some of the other weapons, this movement option is best used to shut people down. You either throw it out and they get grabbed, or they back up and lose their advantage. This crit can be cancelled if you get hit, but it's a sweet mix-up. But don't think I forgot about spec weapons. Nano Prodigy spec the Railblade is honestly cracked because it has medium weapon swing speed, heavy weapon damage, multiple ways to get around people, and knock down. He sent me this clip, but I think it deserves its own video, so maybe I'll talk to him about it. But besides specs, I believe Spear has the most amount of control in the entire game. Game. Of course, when you crit, you slash forward into a multi-hit, but your movement is fully under your control. A normal spear crit without moving sends me back, but if I turn my camera in specific directions, I can modify the way my character moves. As you saw with the other weapons, they cannot change how they move after they crit. This might be less useful without hitting anything, but I can cancel my momentum freely. On a hit, you can either get an instant flourish, or if you want to be cautious, you can press M2 and turn to get shot backwards. There's a lot more you can do with this momentum thing with spears, and I think it's pretty fun to spring off of players, and that's why I'd like Spears so much. Honestly, I'm really excited to see what's in store for the future of Deep Woken, and I hope you learned something new about one of your favorite weapons. Comment down below if I missed something. Thank you guys for watching, and make sure to like and subscribe. Have a good one!